Thank you for watching this week's music tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about how to read music in bass clef. This is especially important for those of you who are wanting to learn cello, bass, and piano. Violinists and violas use other clefs, but today we are just going to be focusing on learning the bass clef. This video is really for beginners who have never even seen sheet music before, and so I'm going to be starting out with the very basics. What you see in front of you is called a musical staff. There are five lines, and then there are the spaces in between those lines. Each of those spaces and each of those lines have their own individual note names associated with them. Now, other instrumentalists read in other clefs, and in those clefs, the names of the lines and spaces are different. But in today's video, I just want to give you the note names for the bass clef so that you can use it to learn um, cello, bass, you know, and all of the instruments that read from the bass clef. As you can see, I have written out the note names in correlation to each line. So from the bottom, we have G, B, D, F, and A. And so that you can hear, I'm going to get my cello and play those notes for you. So here is G. And this note right there is the open G string on the cello. So it is the third string on the cello. And then here is B. And then open D, this is the second string on the cello. And F. And then open A, this is the first string on the cello. Here we have our spaces. The bottom space is F. The next one is A. Next is C. E. G, B. As you can see, as you go up the staff, the notes get higher, and as you go down the staff, the notes get lower. Now that you know the note names for the lines and the spaces, whenever you see a note, whichever line or space it is on, it has that note name. And of course, the fingers on your instrument, whatever instrument you play, um, each of those notes on the instrument correlate with whatever you're reading on the staff. And so, for example, the first note, F, down at the bottom there, that's going to be fourth finger on the C string for the cello. The A is going to be first finger on the G string. C is going to be fourth finger on the G string. E is going to be first finger on your D string. G fourth finger on your D string and B first finger on your A string. And a lot of people have different ways of memorizing those. Um, as you can see, it spells face and then just G, B at the end. Um, people come up with acronyms. Um, whatever works for you. Um, I just kind of, <laughs> I've just been reading music for such a long time that just it happens naturally and you learn to memorize things. Although this video is not intended to teach you rhythms quite yet, I will be saving that for another video coming soon, hopefully. Um, I would like to show you this basic note value, and this is called a quarter note. And this is usually what books use to teach beginners whenever they're starting to learn how to read sheet music, um, you usually start out with the quarter note. And a lot of this beginner material is written in 4-4 four, four time, which means that there are four quarter notes in one measure. And if I have um, a tempo of maybe around 60 beats per minute, which uh, I don't have a metronome with me right now, but let me, let me estimate. It's probably too fast. But each one of these snaps that you hear because I'm snapping, I'm not very good at snapping. <laughs> but each one of these beats that you're hearing, that would be a quarter note. And so four of these quarter notes are in one measure. I don't know if you guys can hear the um, background music. My brother's practicing piano, so um, sorry if that's distracting. Um, right now, what you have in front of you is an example of a scale. And there are no bar lines, there's no time signature, so um, that's why I've left the stems off of the note. The stems are little sticks that go on top of the note <laughs> to um, dictate the rhythmic duration of each note. But since there are no rhythmic boundaries in this example, I just left the stems off. And we can save that for another video at another time. Um, 
In this example though, since we're focusing on note names, you can see that it goes from a low G to a high G. There are eight notes in this scale and all of the notes in between those two G's are going up by steps of either a whole step or a half step. The first interval that you see from G to A is a whole step because there is room for a half step which would be G sharp or you can call it A flat. Between A and B, that is also a whole step. It can be either A sharp or B flat. That is not written, you don't see that. Um, between B and C, that is actually a half a step because there is no room for a B sharp or C flat. Um, B sharp is C, basically. Um, they are only a half a step apart, and I wish I could show you on the piano. Um, I actually think that that is in my piano tutorial that I did a while back, which I will post a link to. Um, that might be good for you to take a look at. And then, of course, between C and D, there is another whole step between D and E. That is also a whole step between E and F. That is a half step. And then between F and G, that is a whole step. Now, you might think, well, since we started on G and we go to G, that this is a G major scale. You would be right, except for one thing. The G major scale has a sharp in it. And as you can see, a sharp symbol raises the note by a half a step, and it is placed in front of the nose. What, in front of the nose? What? It is placed in front of the note which is being raised. Because G major has F sharp, we take the sharp and we place it right in front of the F note. If we took away the F sharp, it would sound like this. <laughs> which is a modal scale, but that gets complicated. So right now we're just talking about G major. And to play G major, we have to have an F sharp. So here is G major with an F sharp. So the note that we raised, it went from F, and we raised it by a half a step to F sharp. So... Now, I've put fingerings above each of these notes to show you what they would be on the cello. Whenever you see a zero, that means open string. And so, if you have your cello with you, look at the third string on the cello. So it'll sound like that. That is open G. So if you play that, and then finger one, a whole step above G, A. Finger three on B. Four on C. Open D. Finger one on E, and then finger three on F sharp, and then finger four on G. And now you know what it looks like on staff music. And I will go into detail in later videos about, um, you know, whenever you see the lines above the notes, you know, and the lines attached to the notes, and the little squigglies, and all of the things that, you know, make up sheet music. Um, there are so many other details, but in this video, I hope that I was able to give you um, uh, at least an idea of what it's like, and at least you know where the note names are now. And so, yes, I would definitely suggest going and checking out my piano tutorial. I think that'll um, kind of help you get a clearer picture about how the intervals and the note names work. But um, this definitely gives you a good start for playing the G major scale on the cello and just associating what you're hearing with what you're seeing on the page. So as always, I hope that this video helps. And if you ever have any questions, please let me know.